Hey, we're back from Corona POS to talk about opening a dispensary business. And today we're gonna to focus on the great state of Michigan. Last year, Michigan did $1.4 billion in recreational marijuana sales. The Wolverine State continues to see its cannabis industry expand. From quarter one of 2020 to quarter four of 2021, the amount of marijuana flowers sold grew from $48 million to $223 million. There are now nearly 500 recreational dispensaries in Michigan. And with the tax revenue that marijuana sales bring to local and state governments, there are likely to be more licenses issued in the near future. Cannabis retail can be a highly lucrative business, but but it comes with plenty of details to keep in mind. This includes capitalization, real estate, licensing, security, merchandising, and so much more. This video serves as a guide on how to open a dispensary in Michigan. Keep watching to learn more about licensing, business plans, financing, inventory, and much more. Now let's start with licensing. Michigan's cannabis sector is overseen by the Cannabis Regulatory Agency, or CRA. Most of the state's laws and regulations stem from the 2018 Michigan Regulation and Taxation of Marijuana Act, which legalized marijuana for recreational consumption. To start the application process, fill out a pre-certification to determine whether you're eligible for consideration. If you're a social equity applicant, you must apply separately with Michigan's social equity program prior to completing the general application. For this initial pre-qualification application, a $3,000 non-refundable fee is required. After the non-refundable $3,000 application fee, if approved, there's an initial annual cannabis establishment licensure fee. For retail dispensary licenses in Michigan, this fee is $15,000. As far as state licensing fees go, this is on the higher end. There are dozens of different types of marijuana establishments being approved each month, including plenty of retail-only licensees. The first step of brief qualification consists of a background check on the applicants. The second step focuses more on your actual facility. Michigan's CRA also requires that you have a thorough business plan to show them exactly how you plan on staying in line with their regulations. This includes a review and submission of all necessary paperwork, including copies of a certificate of use and occupancy, a deed or lease agreement, proof of financial responsibility, a marijuana business location plan, a floor plan, a business plan, DBA documentation from your county, if applicable, and a certificate of assumed name. While applying for license is certainly a painstaking competitive ordeal, there are some positives. The whole process is done digitally, allowing you to upload documents right onto the state's portal. Also, the state guarantees a 90-day return time to either approve or deny your application. Still, some marijuana retailers will choose to hire consultants or law firms to handle their application and compliance. To be fair, there is plenty of paperwork and compliance know-how to deal with. A simple Google search will offer several options for attorneys that specialize in cannabis related businesses in Michigan. Now what about your business plan? Like starting any company, you must have a business plan before you start applying for a dispensary license. In fact, it's even more imperative since it's required in the application process. This includes a summary and succinct pitch describing what your business will do and what niche it will fill. Be sure to include details about the structure of your company from the ownership down to managers and blood tenders. Think about how your store will be different from others. You must figure out your niche audience, local competitors, and neighboring clientele, which typically requires focused market research. Include supply chain details about how you plan to stock your store. You should also establish strong relationships with wholesalers. It's crucial to thoroughly and honestly detail all of your real and potential costs. Make an annotated budget list with sections for license fees, real estate, construction, insurance, acquiring stock, security systems, wages for employees, and more. Remember that many states have legal requirements regarding security, insurance, and structural integrity integrity for new dispensaries. Finally, how do you plan on financing all of these upfront and overhead costs? Opening a dispensary is expensive. Your business plan should include particulars regarding loans and repayment. Next, let's talk a bit about location. Michigan gives municipalities the vote to decide whether they want to allow cannabis enterprises in their borders. Unfortunately, 80% of these localities chose to keep marijuana businesses out. While this certainly limits the overall spread of cannabis retail locations in the state, there are still plenty of opportunities. Some places go above and beyond trying to lure in cannabis businesses. For example, Bay City's rules allow for 50 retail locations despite having a smaller population of just 33,000 people. To be sure, having jurisdictions outright ban dispensaries means that there are fewer overall locations available. This limited inventory can cause retail prices to balloon, and finding a landlord willing to rent out what they perceive as risky business isn't always easy. Still, this is not a reason to be dissuaded from entering the industry. It just takes a bit more work and preparation. Familiarize yourself with Michigan's cannabis zoning laws, which establish which locations actually allow marijuana retail businesses to operate. Michigan statutes on this are similar to other states with basic zoning laws around schools, daycare centers, etc. 
and cities can independently adjust these requirements however they see fit. Michigan, like all states in which cannabis is legal, has written regulations for security requirements. Michigan is no exception here. Obviously, they require that all points of entry be locked with access to products and cash secured. Their statute also has specific rules for camera surveillance, including coverage of every part of the dispensary facility as well as storage of digital video files. Your security plan must be submitted as part of your application process. Interestingly, Michigan does not have written law regarding security personnel. Dispensaries handle a ton of cash, which at times presents an opportunity for criminal larceny. Depending on the size of your operation, it could still be wise to reach out to a marijuana business security company and see what options they offer for armed or unarmed guards. Many cannabis entrepreneurs will also need to find options for financing. With cannabis still federally illegal and its trade not insured by the FDIC, legacy banks and lenders won't work with dispensaries. And while Michigan has seen an increase in banks and credit unions that allow cash deposits for marijuana-related businesses, they do not offer financing. Therefore, most dispensary owners rely on working with either cannabis-specific financial institutions or private equity and venture capitalists. For non-dilutive financing, check out the Michigan-based lender Cooper Street Capital. They offer many different types of cannabis business loans, including real estate loans. Another option is seed to sale funding, which has lent $70 million worth of loans to cannabis companies. Dispensary owners also have the option to reach out to either individual angel investors or private equity firms. These financiers could potentially offer increased connections and expertise in the business world. However, you will have to give up significant equity in your company if you choose to go with this option. Your staff is another important area to consider. While merchandising, branding, and marketing are all critical, your bud tenders are the front line of what makes your dispensary great. They will be the ones interacting with your guests and making suggestions on a day-to-day -day basis. Bud tenders in Michigan are paid roughly $14 an hour for entry-level positions and up to $20 for experienced dispensary workers. Remember, having knowledgeable bud tenders can go a long way in running a successful cannabis shop. For dispensaries that are of higher volume, you want to consider hiring a compliance officer to ensure that your dispensary is following all regulations completely. In addition, a floor manager to oversee and troubleshoot all day-to-day -day operations will help maintain proper procedures and efficiency. While these types of supervisors demand higher salaries, they're important for keeping your store in line with legality, compliance, and profitability. Next, think about your inventory and how you'll procure it. Michigan does not have a cap on the number of growers licenses that the state can issue. It actually has some of the lowest wholesale cannabis prices in the country due to high supply and lower demand. This means that a pound of cannabis flour is available to retailers for as low as $1,000. However, it also means that the retail price has plummeted for the consumer. To be sure, Michigan's recreational market is rocky and still stabilizing from recent legalization, and it's likely to keep changing in the future. Keep an eye on competitor pricing and sales volume when thinking about profitability and margins. You can also think about vertical integration. One way that marijuana entrepreneurs have recommended remaining profitable and immune to price fluctuations is by vertically integrating your cannabis enterprise. Vertical integration means that you're essentially stacking licenses to be able to carry out multiple types of entities under the same business. For example, you would grow, process, and sell cannabis all under the same ownership. Acquiring multiple licenses, as well as setting up grow operations, production sites, distribution channels, and retail shops obviously requires significant capital investment. Thus, it's not an easy or realistic goal for all entrepreneurs to attempt. For smaller operators who want to run an integrated marijuana enterprise, there's the micro-business option. Michigan's marijuana micro-businesses are vertically consolidated companies that require specific criteria for applicants. For example, they must be state residents, run an operation that has a small number of employees, and cultivate fewer total plants, among other things. There are actually two types of micro-business licenses in Michigan, the original marijuana micro-business license and the Class A micro-business license. These differ based on the total quantity sold and, in the end, their licensing costs. The point of these micro-businesses is to bring local, artisanal, in-house craft marijuana to the market. In this regard, they are similar to vineyards and microbreweries. Because of their reduced licensing fees, they offer a lower barrier to entry for cannabis entrepreneurs that wish to run a vertically integrated business. While there are only a handful of companies operating under Michigan's micro-business licenses, this type of enterprise is worth looking into as a viable option for cannabis retail longevity. You also need to consider track and trace technology. Michigan uses Metric for its track and trace software to monitor marijuana products. Metric is a Florida-based technology company that uses databases and propriety tags to track every cannabis item that is sold in the state from seed to sale. Before you get your dispensary up and running, you'll need to complete registration and training through their website portal. In addition, every employee that you hire will need to complete certification before they start working at your cannabis retail store. All of your sales and inventory must be reported to Metric. There are no exceptions. 
Luckily, Kona POS seamlessly integrates with the Track and Trace system so that you can automatically push all of your sales reports right into their database. Metrics Open API works in conjunction with Corona POS so that your workflow will be effortlessly compliant, taking away the burden of having to manually upload any sales data. This smart integration reduces regulation stress on all of your employees and yourself as the owner. While marijuana products' profit margin floats between 10 and 20%, succeeding in this crowded and competitive space is no easy feat. Hence, it's important to take the steps to help make your dispensary stand out. Using social media can be a great way to drive followers towards your e-commerce or brick and mortar stores. Through Instagram, you can display your staff's personality, featured products, and educational information on marijuana's health. Just be sure to stay compliant and clearly note that you are not making sales through the platform. You also wanna open up your dispensary to as many channels as possible. This goes for searchability as well as fulfillment. Apps like Ease and Weed Maps will allow cannabis consumers to easily find your shop and see what you have to offer on your menu. Best of all, they'll be able to order deliveries directly from the app. Finally, think about marketing. Corona POS integrates with the cannabis marketing and CRM platform SpringBig. Utilize your point of sale data to implement targeted text message campaigns, loyalty programs that keep your clientele coming back, and promotional emails around holidays and birthdays. As an industry leader, SpringBig offers proven increases in customer retention. And best of all, they guarantee cannabis marketing compliance. Running your track and trace program, enhancing loyalty marketing, and getting the most out of your customer data are all made possible with a smart, robust point of sale. Corona POS offers the best dispensary point of sale in the industry. To learn more, sign up for a product demo and free trial by clicking the link in the description. And to learn more about cannabis and retail in general, subscribe to our blogging channel. Thanks for watching today and we'll see you again soon.